Hey, it's Pharaoh, and before we get started, think about subscribing and hitting the like button. In today's video, I want to talk about why isn't Fire Force as popular as it should be. Considering the initial hype behind Fire Force was actually really positive and really exciting, <laughs> it doesn't seem that Fire Force withstood the test of time as its flame burnt out. <laughs> This is really interesting to me, considering Fire Force has a really unique story where you follow Shinra, the protagonist, as he's a fire student at the Fire Academy, and he wants to become part of the Fire Force so he has the ability to help people and save them from the unknown phenomenon known as spontaneous human combustion. As you follow him, he wants to figure out why it's caused and how to stop it. I think this is really cool because how you're introduced to the world is very well written. As well as this anime and manga actually having really good characters, I think that Shinro is a really good protagonist. He has a good mixture of all the qualities that you would like to see in a protagonist and he's very likable. Then you have characters like Joker who's actually an anti-hero within the series who is very likable and has a twisted backstory. So there's a lot to unpack there. Then you have somebody like Arthur, which if you've seen my Shadowhouse videos, he's a lot like John, or John's a lot like him, considering that he came out first. But Arthur is one of the funniest characters in it because he's just an airhead of a character, but he's really cool and really strong, just like John is. So if you've seen that video, then you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Then you have somebody like Benny Maru, who to me is like a combination of Shikamaru, Kakashi, and Itachi, as he cares for his village or his little sector of the empire, but he just is really lazy, but really strong and is really willing to help those within his community as they have a really strong bond. Besides these four characters, I think Fire Force has a well-established roster of characters that are really likable and have really unique personalities and character traits. So I think these cast of characters and many more are really well-placed within the series. But then another thing about Fire Force to me that really takes the cake and it's really interesting is that the power system that they utilize within the manga and the show. This is because everything is used by fire, but how they use it is just so well established because it kind of feels like the author went through the time and effort to do research on what was possible with fire and utilizes that within it. So it makes it more grounded in our reality as well as their reality. And it gives you a, a greater understanding of how their powers work. But the power system actually has multiple stages within it. And this is because spontaneous human combustion actually creates the infernals that roam around the environment that we get to see within the series. But those are the mindless versions that don't really have any thoughts or anything, but just mindlessly attack. Then a step above that, you have the demon infernals, which actually resemble people within the real world, but are their doppelgangers, but actually have their own thoughts and are a lot stronger than any other infernal so it takes a really skilled and really powerful character to be able to take them down <laughs> then you have people that are considered second generation manipulators who have the ability to manipulate and control existing fire but they can't create their own then you have third generation that can generate and manipulate their own flames from a body part or an object but not existing flames and a step above that is fourth generation. Fourth generation is very special case because you would have to have an Adola Link and Adola Grace. This allows for any of the pyrokinetic characters to actually have an increased capacity to what their powers can actually do. And it's well beyond what any other regular pyrokinetic person could establish. Another really great thing about Fire Force that I think isn't talked about enough is that the character designs for a lot of the characters are actually really simple but really effective and they actually have some of my favorite character designs in anime in general. With all great things, there's obviously downsides and I think these are some of the reasons that some people might not have gotten into Fire Force, especially in the beginning, is that there's actually a problem with one of the main characters in the group named Tamaki, to me, who's actually a really good character but is underutilized, especially in the beginning because she's just shown as a female character that's there just for fan service and I think that is a disservice to the series because she's a well-established character and she's actually really likable. But her fan service aspect sometimes kills the mood in something that's really serious. And it happens way too often, especially in the beginning of the series. But as the series progressed, 
this happens less and less. But this is where I think the drop off started because this happened so much in the beginning, it probably turned people off, but they didn't get to see what happened afterwards. And I think that's really a shame because she's actually utilized in a miniature arc where she has to fight one of the strongest enemies in the series. But the only way that she defeats him is through the use of fan service. And I think that it's self-defeating because it was funny probably the first or second time, but this happens at least five different times. So this whole entire time, you're just like, why? She has the ability to do so much more and you do this. So I could understand where people were turned off, especially since this happens, like I said, earlier in the series. So people are already gonna be turned off. But overall, I really enjoy the series because I keep up with the manga every single week and I enjoy what they have as there's a whole bunch of funny different things that you'll see like way later on in the later chapters. That stuff I've never seen done in any other manga or anime. And I think characters and their character development are done really well in this series, especially with her as I think she's redeemed later on in the series. So I would definitely recommend checking out Fire Force now, reading the manga and then checking out the anime because another thing that's really important about this show to me is that the sound design and the visuals are done very, very well. It makes you feel like you're immersed within the universe. So I would definitely recommend checking it out. With that though, if you made it this far into the video, drop a like and subscribe for more content. If you have any questions, manga or anime recommendations, or anything that you find of interest, let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you in the next video. Deuces!